Hey guys, this is Aaron from Photog Adventures. Today on Astro Photog, I'm going to show you how I use photo pills to plan my Milky Way shots. Okay, for this portion of the video, you're not going to see me. You're only going to hear me because I'm going to show you what's going on on my iPad. I use my iPad for photo pills. So let's open up photo pills. For the sake of this lesson, we are not talking about any of these other apps. Only going to focus on Moon and we're gonna focus on planner. And so these two things are the ways that I plan my Milky Way photography. Let's go back to the moon first because the first thing first, is it a good time for the moon? When I wanna know whether it's gonna be a good time to get out, I wanna make sure that the moon is entirely out of my way or at least out of my way enough to make it work. So let's use this night that I'm going out tonight. The new moon was Wednesday, right now it's Friday, and I'm heading out to go to Southern Utah. So in Southern Utah area, let's do a settings and we'll change our position. I'm gonna be closest to Blanding, Utah. So let's just type that in, Yura. But here it is, Blanding, Utah was found. I hit done. It recognizes right away. Here it is, Friday, April 28th, and it's Blanding, Utah. You look at the side right here and all the information you need is quickly laid out right here on the left side of the screen. So what is this telling me? You're trying to find out how what's going on tonight. I'm here at the middle of the afternoon on Friday. Is this telling me what's happening tonight? The only thing it is telling me is that sun sets at 8.06 p.m. and that there's going to be a moon set at 10.51 p.m. Friday night. Oh, okay, Friday night, the moon sets at 1051. I'm really wanting Saturday morning. Saturday morning right here, you can see that the galactic core will rise at 1211. Well, what happened on Friday again? Oh, yeah, yeah, the moon is going to set right at 10.51 p.m. So if the galactic core rises after that, the moon won't even be up in the way. And the entire time, the galactic center, the galactic center of the Milky Way, where it has the brightest part of all those stars lined up together, so it's the brightest section of the Milky Way, that is going to be visible from 12.11 a.m. to 4.47 a.m. And the reason why 4.47 is because that's the beginning, that's the minute that astronomical twilight begins. Okay, 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 that's kind of confusing. Sorry about that. The way that they have these graphics set up, these 24-hour periods, they have them in a vertical line. And so with that vertical line, you can't really tell what we're talking about. When I'm jumping back and forth between Friday and Saturday, you can't tell where Friday begins and Saturday ended. And it got really confusing. So... Here is a quick linear path so that you can understand that 12 a.m. Friday morning to 12 a.m. Saturday morning to 12 a.m. Sunday morning is all written out in these graphics. So, how do you understand this? Why do I use the Moon app to quickly see all of the Milky Way information? Well, here's the trick. When you go in on Friday in the afternoon and you pull up Friday, you're like, okay, I'm going to go out tonight, Friday the 28th. What am I going to see? Well. You're here at this point in the timeline, and you look over here at the Milky Way, these graphics like this, these are the Milky Way galactic core graphics. It's showing you this because right here, that biggest circle is the biggest part of the Milky Way, and it's above the horizon at this point. It rises to your horizon, depending on your terrain, how many mountains you have in your path. You might not see it yet, but that's when it hits the horizon if it were to be perfectly flat wherever you went. These graphics, you're looking to find out where they are and how they're working with your schedule. You look on Friday and you're like, okay, well, the Milky Way rose in the morning. It's going to be rising up tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. So you switch the date over to Saturday and you quickly see, awesome, Galactic Core rises at 1211 and it'll be astronomical twilight at 447 a.m. I'm going to have almost five hours to play around with my camera and try and get a Milky Way shot. Well, is this all the information you need? No, 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 you need to know where the moon is. And so when you look at this graphic on Saturday, you're like, okay, where is the moon? Oh, here it is. It rose at this time, 9.21 a.m. Well, what time did it set? This graphic right here doesn't show you anything about where the moon set, what time it set, what's going on. So now you have to go back to Friday. Go, okay, what time did the moon set? There it is, 10.51 p.m. As of 11 p.m., the moon set, and just about an hour and 10 minutes later, the next morning, hour and 10 minutes later, here's the galactic core rising. So now, perfect information. You're like, all right, awesome. The moon is setting, and then I won't have any moon in my way the whole time the galactic core is visible. So you're going to have some days where you look at this, and you'll see, okay, the galactic core rose at this time, but the moon sets about here. And if the moon sets right here in the middle, 
you're going to have less to no chance of having the Milky Way be photographed during that time. It just depends on how big of a moon, if it's lower than 40% illuminated. It matters whether or not it's behind mountains in your area and whether it lights up the sky too much. And there's a lot of factors in play. The absolute best time is always going to be when the moon is completely set and a half an hour after that and you don't have any light coming in at all from the moon. That's the best time to photograph the Milky Way. So you're knowing in this case, if you look on 29th of April where I'm at, this is going to be where the moon is. Ah, oh, it sets here on Friday. It's not even in the way whatsoever for my Milky Way. Yeah, I think that's everything. Anything else confusing about this? You're not going to have any other pieces of information on here. This is just everything that it'll cover. But you'll see it in that vertical line. I mean, check this out. Here's Friday, recognize the graphic. And then here's the Saturday graphic. So you can see how I drew up those two days entirely, except for, no, I don't think I missed anything. And so you got the example of here. So when you're looking at this on your iPad, on your phone, just know that it's telling you from 12 a.m. until 12 a.m. the next day. And this is what's happening with the Milky Way, the moon, and the sun. So. That's it, that's it, that's everything. Let's go back to the video. And so as you can see, I can check the very day that I'm on, looking where we're at, and you can even change it with these arrows in the top right and left if you wanna see how the moon is gonna adjust over the next few days. Faster way than that is to click on the calendar button on the very bottom, and you can see the entire month, and it gives you the moon phases quickly, easily, in perfect visual right here. Now I know that the new moon was on the 26th, and I'm right here on Friday, a couple days after the new moon, so it shows me that you've got this time period, the week before the new moon and the week after, that I have an opportunity. For instance, if I go all the way to May 5th, that's kind of a full moon almost. It's a waxing gibbous. Will I have any opportunity, actually? Well, look, the moon is going to set at 3.46 3.46 a.m. on Friday. So before I go to work on Friday, May 5th, I can go out, and between 3.46 a.m. to 4.37 a.m., I'm going to have a window, almost a full hour of a window to see the Milky Way. So this is my favorite way to check to see if the moon's going to be in my way. So now let's go back and I want to show you how I plan my actual Milky Way shots and here's the elements of this screen, the planner that you need to know right now. Now I really am not going to explain everything. I'm going to do a separate video like I said that's going to explain everything. So right now we're just going to tell you the basics. So all these different lines, what they mean, how they work. We're not going to talk about anything other than the gray lines right now. The sunrise and sunset are kind of obvious. We'll let you figure that out. But the gray lines we'll talk about in specific. So here we are. This is where I wanted to go tonight. And you can see how it's right next to the House on Fire ruins. And if I were to stand right here, what happens with the Milky Way? When you scrub this bottom part, it'll actually move through the timeline. And if it gets in the nighttime, it's going to show you these dotted arc, this dotted line arc that's happening here. And it actually gets bigger dots when you get closer to the Milky Way core. So the galactic center is not only the largest dot on this dotted arc, but they've added this white line right through it so that you can say, OK, standing here looking exactly that direction, I'm looking right at the galactic core. So you can plan something as complex as two poles going up and the galactic core is in between it. Two rock formations over at Bryce Canyon and have the galactic core right between them. You can plan that using this. And so wherever you put your pin, you can see how it works. You hold your finger down and your pin will move to where that location is. And you can see how, all right, well, the Milky Way core, if I was to stand, say, back here, would I be able to see the core of the Milky Way? Let me move my pin again. In this situation where you can't get the pin to react to you by putting your finger down, you go ahead and use the bottom button here. You see at the very bottom of the square of the, of, the, of the map, you see the plus sign, and the next to it is this sign. If you don't see that, just hit the plus sign, and you see all these different options in the shelf. So if your shelf happens to be in a different button right now, make sure you choose the one where there's a pin and an X underneath it, and that's the one I'm referring to. So you hit that, and while it's red, you can move this around anywhere you want and fine-tune it. And so now I'm really going to fine-tune my position. I want to stand right where the shadow is of this rock. I think I could have a cool shot there with the ruins visible on my left side of my camera and the Milky Way. What does it look like there? So I hit the red button again, and it puts the pin right there. So now let's talk about what this white line is. See how it teeter-totters right and left right now as I scrub? 
you can see how that white line is indicating where the front of the Milky Way is and the rear of the Milky Way. Or you can look at it as right side, left side. Basically, this is the arc of the Milky Way as it hits the horizon. The white line is the horizon. And the horizon that's on the right is the one that's leading towards the great, awesome, galactic center of the Milky Way. And so when you can see that gray line, what the gray line is indicating is that once that white line crosses the gray line, that's the moment that the galactic center becomes visible. It's on the horizon. Were everything to be completely flat, you would see the galactic center. And so right now it tells me at 12.13 a.m. in this area on Saturday, April 29th, so not tonight but tomorrow morning, 12.13 a.m. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to see the galactic core as soon as 12.13, possibly. And usually a little bit after that because of obstacles like mountains, trees, yada, yada. I'm going to pull up and all the way through. Another quick hint, if you hold your finger down on that bottom square, that bottom rectangle, you can actually change your scrubbing to be more fine-tuned and move less time quickly. If you hold the finger down and you shrink it again, now you're going through the entire night period and day period very quickly. I'm almost always in this position unless I'm really fine-tuning something. So here we go. Now that I know the galactic core has risen after 12 or 13, I want to do more with it. I want to go ahead and find out when is it going to be visible with this rock face. As I keep scrubbing to the left, I can see how the galactic core is moving, moving that line, that white line is coming off of my point, and it's saying, ooh, right about here, it's creeping around that corner. So you can use this white line to know exactly the direction. So if you were to match that exact spot and stand right there, the galactic core would become visible around that rock right at the point of... What is that, 225 around? So you know around 225, you got to be watching. That's going to happen. If you wanted to line up the Milky Way core between two awesome features at Bryce Canyon, you can have two features lined up on photo pills, figure them out, know where they are on the map, and say, okay, I want the galactic core to be between here. What time do I have to be there, and where should I stand? And you can use this planner to get there. One of my favorite things to plan around is the silo because I want the Milky Way to go on the other side of it. And so let me show you how I plan around the silo and explain this one more time. So now I pulled out away from that location and I'm looking down at Eureka where nearby is the silo. Now say you did what I did and you moved away and you don't have the pin with you. That's why holding down your finger is so awesome, it's just sometimes it gets glitchy. You look at Eureka, I go out here to where the silo is, I'm zooming in, and there it is. So then I usually stand right about here. So if I'm standing there and hold the pin down, the pin shows up the same time frame. It shows me exactly where the Milky Way is in this position. So now I know that any time after 2, oh, 3.30, about, looks like, looks like 3.20, 3.15 is pretty good if I wanted to have the core right above the silo. But if I wanted to have it on the right side of the silo and be this nice angle, if you notice in the far right corner, down here at the bottom on this side, you can see this picture of the Milky Way. That picture of the Milky Way is telling you throughout the night what angle is the Milky Way at. And so if you're curious, is this going to be a vertical Milky Way? Is this going to be a slanted 45 degree angle Milky Way? Well, between nighttime and when it becomes astronomical twilight, it never gets much more than 45 degree angle at this time of year. So that is a quick guide right here in Planner that I always check to see, okay, what's the Milky Way going to look like? This is my quick guide to know. So if I look at it about 3.15, I'm over the silo, but over 3.30, it's more like what I'm wanting. And 3.30, how much time do I have for astronomical twilight at 3.30? Another quick guide is still here on the right side, and it's showing you that the moon's going to rise at 9.27 a.m., so that's not a problem. And underneath it, astronomical twilight, it begins at 4.48 a.m. So that I have an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 15 minutes from this point to when I have the astronomical twilight getting in the way. So, okay, I'm going to wait for 3.30. I'm going to get this shot from this spot. But what if I was there at 2.30 and I really needed to get somewhere else, but I really wanted the Milky Way to be there? Obviously, on location, i just going to keep walking. Keep walking until the Milky Way is on the right side of the silo. If I move my pin, I can see where a possible location would be. Move my X over right about here. 
and not much movement really went to the other side of the road i'm right here and i'm already seeing the milky way on the right side of the silo so let's just go over there on the other side of the road here cross that part stay on the berm okay boom at 2 30 of course i can still get the milky way where i want it to be just by moving around so you use the planner to see where the core of the milky way is going to be from a specific location I use Stellarium to see kind of a first-person view of the sky. What am I going to experience? It helps me get excited for it. It helps me see other things that I'm going to explain here in a minute. But Photopills is my precise planner, my top-down exact foot, exact meter that I want to stand on. Where's the Milky Way going to be? Well, this is just a few ways that you can use Photopills just very quickly. The comprehensive version of using Photopills, I have a whole video coming out of just how to use Photopills for the Milky Way, and I go into depth about what everything on here means. So come back for that, but for right now, here's the quick version. So as you can see, with Photopills, you can do a lot. If you only had one and only plan on using one, use Stellarium. Stellarium's free, get that, use it. You're not gonna be able to plan as find the details as you want to plan it with the Photopills app. But with the Photopills app, get that. I completely recommend getting that too. Again, this is not endorsed by Photopills. I wish it was. Hey guys, throw money our way. And I'll say this again because I believe it and love it. But this is just my own opinion. And man, I really love that app. So thanks for watching, guys. This is Aaron again from Photog Adventures. Keep watching for Astro Photog videos and have a great week. And I hope you get out there and capture the Milky Way someday soon. Bye. So in my test tonight, I'm going to compare the two lenses against each other. I'm going to cheat.